we got into this text last week and could not finish it. I think it's appropriate that we finish. We're in the series called Salt and Light. Tell your neighbor, salt and light. Tell them you're the salt and you're the light. I'm the salt and I'm the light. Our job is to share our faith. The word of the Lord in Acts chapter 8 says how um, Philip, who was one of the first deacons of the church back in Acts chapter 5, uh, Philip became an evangelist because of the persecution of the church. I talked about how people began to spread out. And um, Philip was one of those who spread out under persecution. He went sharing his faith, and he ends up in this chapter in a place called Samaria. The particular town is not mentioned, but that's where he encounters um, this miraculous service. God is breaking out, and people are giving their lives to Christ, and people are getting healed all over the place. And the Lord says to him by an angel, y'all remember this from last week? says, uh, go south on that road and go to the place it is the desert. Philip has no idea who he's going to meet, but out of obedience, tell your neighbor, out of obedience, he went, asked, did you do the same? I just need y'all to practice this truth, apply it. Ask him, did you go where God told you to go? If you haven't, tell me, if you haven't, get your behind where God told you to go. I got to help the people of God apply the word of God. Uh, so, so Philip goes, and he goes to this desert place. He has no idea why God has called him there. And while he's there in the desert, in just a short order of time, comes this this carriage riding through the desert, and there is a well-to-do man. Remember, we discovered that this Ethiopian eunuch was a eunuch because he served the queen of Ethiopia, whose name was not... Okay, six of y'all remember that point. Her name was not Candace. If you name your daughter Candace, that's your business. That's twins, you and the Lord. You name your children, whatever you want to name them. Just know that her name was not Candace. We don't know her name. We know her title. She was the Kandaki or the Kandachi of Ethiopia. She was a woman who was a baller and a shot caller. She was large and in charge, and she, she oversaw a lot of money. This gentleman, the eunuch, was her financial manager. Everybody got that picture? God tells Philip um, to go run up to that chariot and stay with it. And Philip meets somebody, and remember who said, you don't know who you're going to meet. When God leads you to people, don't, don't try to size people up based on what they dress like, what they look like. Don't size them up on the basis of what they drive. Because what I discovered, some of the brokest people drive the nicest cars and the richest people drive the brokest cars. And you will, you, will, you will get it twisted if you try to size people up according to what is external. Philip encounters this guy and he is reading aloud from the scroll of Isaiah and Isaiah 53 in particular. This brother has a driver and an assistant, which ought to tell all of us something. I ain't saying. (laughs) Yes. Um, I want to give you the final two points. Last week we talked about being obedient to the voice of God, being open to the people God will introduce you to, and being led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. The, The next point in this message is simply... Um, uh, how shall I say this? Be ready to meet people where they are. If you're going to share your faith, and we are all commanded to share our faith, this is not a um, opinion of God. This is not a invitation that you can accept or not accept if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. We are called to share our faith. 
Yes, by how we live, that would be helpful if you live what you're going to talk about. Amen. Say amen. amen. About 200 people. Is anybody online tracking with me? If you're going to open your mouth, live like you're talking. Yeah. And if you're really saved, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because some of I just, I'm, I just let people watch my life. I want people to watch my life. You're going to have to open your mouth. So the first, first principle is to be ready to meet people where they are. And in chapter 8, verses 29 through 31, pick it up here. The Spirit says to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? Now, I think this is really important that if you're going to meet people where they are, you should be led by the Spirit. Like, everybody's not your assignment every time. You, it's not your job to go save the world. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You need to be sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to hear if the Holy Spirit is saying, sit right there next to this person. I used to take the bus when we lived in Los Angeles so that my wife could have the car. That's a note for some brothers. I don't know who that was for. Um, you get on the bus. Okay, let me get back. And, and I would get on the bus, the big blue bus in L.A., West L.A., and, and I, would, I would listen to the Lord for who I'm supposed to talk to on my way to campus. And I would listen to where I was supposed to sit on my way to campus. I cannot tell you the number of people who got saved on the big blue Santa Monica bus just by listening and having conversations. It was about a 40-minute ride from my door to campus, and oftentimes in the morning, I would get to meet the most interesting people and have spiritual conversations with them and lead them to Christ. And then I got off the bus and went on about my business. If you're going to share your faith, it's important that you meet people where they are, not where you are. Because, because Philip is an evangelist and a deacon in the church of the living God. Baptized as with fire. Y'all not going to help me preach up in here. <laughs> Philip had titles. He had church titles. Come on, help me talk, somebody. He had church titles, but Philip didn't jump on the man with his titles. Now, you know that I'm a deacon. I'm a deacon. I'm a deacon and a bishop. Bruh, I just, you know. You, you don't have to put all of that on people. You got to meet people where they are. Just be a person. How about that? Just be a person. Just be normal people who talk to normal people like they're normal. I feel the anointing all over that. That's so normal, it's anointed. Just, just meet people where they are. Philip didn't throw on him all of his titles and all of his badges and all of who he knows. He just, Philip comes up to him, he says, hey, man. I hear you reading that scripture. Right. He asked him a simple question. When you meet people where they are, can I just tell you one, one thing that's real important is that you learn how to observe people. Because yeah. sometimes you'll talk to people, you ain't, you ain't took no time to find out nothing about them. And you can find out so much about a person in two minutes' time. If you'll just look and observe, don't assume... And don't get creepy. I feel the anointing all over this. Because some of us are religious, we're creepy. And we ask questions and we're nosy. If you're going to meet people where they are, it's not about you being nosy. It's about you being inquisitive and interested in people. So he makes some observations. He can see that this brother is in a nice chariot. Brother got an assistant and a driver. Hmm. Now, either he is fronting or he is really balling. Just hold on to that. Brother's on the road. He's coming from, this road goes to Jerusalem. If you're coming from there, he's coming from Jerusalem. And he's going somewhere else. And this is a brother. Philip ain't no brother, but he can see that this is a black man coming from Jerusalem reading the prophet Isaiah. Which should tell somebody, 
this brother looking for something. Are y'all tracking with me? If you watch people long enough, you'll get enough of a profile to help you know what questions to ask. He's watching this man, and he can see these things. He's observing him, and he can see that this man must be hungry spiritually. And he knows that the Lord has led him to him, so he knows that something is, is happening. Y'all follow what I'm saying? When you, when you meet people where they are, um, let me... Let me give you some questions that you should ask or some things you should observe. Like, do they have tattoos? Do you know people get tattoos for reasons? Did y'all know that? I've never met a person who got a tattoo just because, well, I, I, no, I did. I met a couple people who got their tattoos because they were high and they didn't know what they were. They are like, man, I was high. I just went into the shop. I don't, it don't mean nothing. But most people, when they get a tattoo, it means something to them. Hey, bro, that's a nice tattoo. Tell me about your tat. And quiet. I heard one person say, I went into a room and I met this gentleman who was running for political office. And he seemed like the most interesting person in the room until I went into another room and talked to another leader who made me feel like I was the most interesting person in the room. Which room would you rather be in? I would rather be in the room where you make me feel like I'm the most interesting person in the world. All I'm telling you is that people, people want to know, are you interested in me? Or you just want to tell me about you? Do you just want to tell me about your religion, about your faith? Or do you care? See, when you meet people where they are, you ask them, hey, so tell me about your family. You, uh, you, yeah, I see your wedding ring on. How long you been married? What's your love story? I ask people all the time, like, what, uh, what makes you tick? You'd be amazed. People go, you know, that's a good question. You know what I really like? And they'll tell you. I asked a brother, I was meeting with a brother yesterday. I said, man, what gets you out of bed in the morning? And he began to tell me about his passion. Are y'all following what I'm saying? You, you want to ask people questions that have to do with who they are. Philip is looking at this guy. He's not, he's not nosy. He just cares. So he asked this guy. Um, he says, do you understand what you're reading? I love this. Philip, listen, if you're going to meet people where they are, you got to go where people are. You don't have to like where they are, by the way. Because some people... <laughs> All right, so I was walking around in the city yesterday with one of my daughters, and uh, um, everybody was out yesterday. Am I, did I lose my, oh, y'all hear me? Everybody was out yesterday. It was a beautiful day, and we're walking, and I promise you, I was like, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to make it home because this contact high I got right now, I might, I might need to just park in the truck for about 20 minutes. I walked three blocks. I said, Lord, I ain't felt like this in a long time. I'm feeling real nice right now, Lord. Don't y'all don't tell people. Don't, y'all online, don't y'all tell people. I was, just, I was just enjoying being around the people as we were walking. Some of y'all. <laughs> See, there's only a few saved people really in church. <laughs> what I'm saying is... <laughs> Sometimes when you're, going to, when you're going to care about people and be around people, you can't always avoid what people are into. You can't always make what their thing is your repulsion. Yeah. 
You, you, you can't meet people where they are bringing all of your holiness to bear on them. Thank God you're holy. Are you confident enough in the holiness of God in your life that you can handle being around somebody who ain't holy like you? Your family used to love when you come around, but then you got so holy, you don't even come to the family cookouts no more. Sando, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. You done got so holy. You don't even know how to talk to people no more. Unless you said, praise the Lord. They're like, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> you got to meet people where they are. Is this, this making sense to y'all? Meet people where they are. Care enough about them to understand their story. Because everybody has one. Somebody shout, meet them where they are. Can I give you the last? I told you it was going to be a short sermon today. Here's my last point to this sermon. Now, it's got about 12 doors on it, but it is the last point. <laughs> um, so you have to be prepared to open your mouth. Look at this in verse 35 in Acts chapter 8. So the, well, let's go to verse 34. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom... Does the prophet say this of himself or of some other man? This man is asking a question. There are people who will ask you questions. Um, so, so I understand you're a Christian. Now, what kind of are you one of them born again Christians? Has anybody ever been asked that, by the way? Yeah. And to which you should should say, can I help y'all? Um, what by born again, what do you mean? Because they have impressions about our faith. They have impre they have they have um, what do you call these uh, preconceived notions about what your faith means and what kind of person you are in your faith. So what do you mean by am I born again? I want to make sure we're talking from the same page here. And then it gives you an opportunity to explain. So this man asked Philip, he says, um, who, who is this prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or somebody else? And the Bible says in, in 35, verse 35, then Philip opened his mouth. I'm about to run around the church. Y'all help me right now. Tell somebody you're going to have to open your mouth. Tell them the Bible says, open your mouth. Have something to say. Then Philip opened his mouth. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Um, I don't know if you've ever read this scripture. First Peter 3, 15, let's see. Um, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. He says, set apart Christ as your Lord. Set apart Christ as the one who gets to call the shots in your life. Set apart Christ as the one that you answer to. Set him apart as the one for whom you live and set him apart as the one for whom you will die. Come on, help me talk, somebody. He says, if you get this part right, you'll get the next part right. Well, you know that you are under the lordship of Jesus and that he, he, he calls the steps that you march. He beats the drum to which you... Y'all know what I'm saying. When he is your Lord, you can't be quiet. I feel God right there. When, when he is the master of your life, when he is the savior of your life, when he is the redeemer of your life, when he is the forgiver of your sins, when he is the one who snatched you out of the raging seas, when he is the one who pulls you out of the mud, how dare you sit on him and be quiet and not let the redeemed of the Lord say something. Who am I preaching to right now? Tell your neighbor, I got to say something. I got to say something. I got to learn how to open in my mouth and be prepared. Peter says, set apart Christ as Lord. Sanctify him as Lord. He says, um, and always be ready. Oh, my Lord. All, he says, always be ready to give a defense. That means an argumentative approach is not to argue but it is to give a rational explanation for the hope 
that is in you. He says, be ready to explain to people, this is why I thrive. I feel God right there. Be, be ready to explain to people, this is why I still got joy in the midst of the cat. Be ready to explain to people, I've survived some stuff if it had not been for God who, who kept me and who kept me sane and who kept me straight and who kept me from falling. Can I just explain to you that the reason I still am able to go through the storm that I'm in is because I seen God bring me out of another storm. The reason I still give him praise when I got tears in my eyes is because I've seen that he never leaves the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Let, did you ask me how was it that I can still rejoice after what I'm going through? I have seen God with my own eyes move in my circumstances. How dare I sit down and not declare to you and explain to you this is why I'm thriving. I'm, I'm still thriving because God has been on my side. When everybody else was against me, when everybody else counted me out, God kept counting me in. God kept saying, keep going, boy. Keep going. I got a plan for your life. I got a plan for your life, says Jeremiah, plans to give you a hope and a future. I got plans. Who am I preaching to right now? I got to tell somebody that the reason I'm still standing is because God had a plan. Let me explain something to you. The God that I serve brought me out of this situation. You only see in the last part of the story. You didn't see the other 20 chapters, but it was God who pulled me out of that, who got me all the way to this. And some nights I cried. Who am I helping in this camp this morning? When you set him apart as Lord, and you think about all that he's done for you, you can begin to explain to people in a rational fashion why it is you still serve him. People, are, listen, you, you said you were depressed at one time? Yeah, yeah, I, used, I was a mess. I was, I was broke down. And then the Lord broke me out. Come on, help me talk somebody. I, I, was, I was a wretch undone. And then the Lord finished me and refined. All the people who used to be a mess, you know you were a mess. You know if it hadn't been for the Lord on your side. Now, listen, you used to be a bleeder. Any, any, any former bleeders in the house, you walked up to people, they're like, oh, snap, that's a whole lot that he putting on me right now. And God has healed you. And God has straightened out your mind. God has given you awareness. Of Peter said... Always be ready. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you? Tell them, don't get ready. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Don't get ready. Be 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 ready because God is about to use you. God is about to bring somebody across your path. He says, we got we to gotta be prepared to open our mouths. This word... Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now, when you preach Jesus, you don't have to act like you're in a pulpit when you're on the big blue bus. I just got to help all the churchianity folks. You, you don't even need to be on a corner with a bullhorn. If that's your flavor, do you, Pookie. But you can preach the gospel of good news sitting down over a Panera sandwich. Come on, help me talk, somebody. And by the lunch, by the way, by the lunch. Huh? It's, hard to, it's hard to lead people to Jesus if you cheat. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> Peter says, always be ready. I want to give you some, can I share with you some ways you can be ready? I want to give you four statements. You're going to need this, write this down, mark this down, 
etch it in your phone somewhere. I think we're going to get a card made that you can use to share with people. Somebody said, that'd be good. All right. Um, the question is, here's what I want you to ask people this week. Can I share with you why I'm thriving? Some of y'all are like, I ain't thriving, Pastor. I'm broke. You're thriving broke on your way to better. You're still happy. You're still joyful. You have to, you got to speak life over yourself. I am thriving. I was, I was thriving when I wasn't thriving. You didn't know I wasn't thriving because I walked in a room like I was thriving. Listen, I, sometimes you got to fake it. No, no, sometimes you got to faith it until you make it. Come on, help me talk. Listen, can I just go, let me, let me, I got, how, many time, how much time I got on here? I got, they said you got three minutes. Let me tell y'all something. Stop letting your feelings tell you who you are. You got to stop letting your feelings, because you start talking to yourself according to your feelings and you think you're not thriving. We start saying, I'm so depressed. How about if you just say, I feel depressed. Can you separate you from what you feel? I'm going to bring y'all some more this next week. The Lord gave me a, he's given me a wonderful word for next week about going from broke down to breaking through. So make sure you don't let nobody miss church. I feel God wants to use next week's message, but it has to do with this whole theme. Stop letting your feelings tell you who you are. The six primary emotions, four of them are negative. But they're not intended for you to rehearse negativity in your life. They're intended to give you a signal and a message so that you can begin to discern and discover that God is talking to you. That's too much for y'all. Let me get back to my, to my um, what was I saying? Be prepared. Open your mouth. Thank you. So here's a, so the question you want to ask people, um, can I share with you why I'm thriving? I'll give you four reasons. One, um, I've accepted God's love for me. Write that down. I've accepted God's love for me. Bible says in John 3.16, all of us know it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal. For God so loved the world. God loves me. Have you, when you embrace the love of God in your life, that is, that is the, listen, that is the beginning to you coming to faith in Jesus. So many people grow up unloved. So many people grow up not loving themselves. And then you discover that God loves you. And at some point you say, you know what, God, if you love me, I'm going to love me. Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank, thank you for dying on the cross so much. Thank you for loving me so much that you would die on the cross for me. Lord, I receive your love in my life. You got to help people receive the love of God in their lives. You don't start people off with how simple they are. Because the love of God is bigger than anybody's failure. And I, I get tired of people saying, now first of all, you need to admit you're a sinner. Look, we're going to get to that. Trying to meet people where they are. First point is I've accepted God's love for me. The second thing that makes me thrive if I've, is I've accepted my responsibility for my sins. Amen. Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Ain't nobody, no, there's no exception. We've all sinned. Listen, let me take responsibility for mine. When I took responsibility for my sin, I said, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm messed up. I'm jacked up. I did it. I know I did it. I knew when I was doing it. I knew I, knew I was going to do it before I did it. Yeah. I knew I had no business doing it when I was doing it. 
and I'm guilty. I take, I, I've accepted responsibility for my sin. Can you imagine having a conversation with somebody saying, I accept the responsibility for my sin? I didn't dismiss it as, as if it wasn't a thing, as if it wasn't that deep, it wasn't that bad. Well, I ain't hurt nobody, you know, I ain't, you know. Thirdly, I've accepted Jesus' death as the payment for my sins. I couldn't pay for my own sin. But he died for me. And I humbled myself finally to accept his payment for my sin. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for us. And that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So the first statement was what? I accepted God's love for me. I've accepted my responsibility for my sin. I've accepted Christ's payment for my sins. And I personally accepted him as my Lord my Savior, my God. I've accepted him as my Lord, my Savior, my God. That's why I'm thriving. Things are not all perfect in my life, but I'm thriving. Got a relationship with God. Got peace with God. I'm no longer separated from God. I got everything I need to thrive. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. I want to, I want to make this simple for you because you, you can't be prepared scratching all over the place. Our, our preparation comes from knowing the gospel message and being able to sit down with anybody, standing on the bus, sharing an Uber, Smoking a blunt? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let, let's, not, let's not mix the two, if we can, if we can refrain. Are, are y'all catching this? You have to make the sale, though. Once you, t once you share those four things because you were prepared to open your mouth, it's a simple ask, are you ready? to accept him in your life. How many of you remember the day you accepted Christ? Hold your hands up, stick them up real high. That's a lot of y'all who still, rem you still remember that day, don't you? And in almost every case, in almost every case, we were not alone. There was some preacher on TV there was some friend, there was some grandmama, some auntie yeah. leading you through the plan of salvation and you accepted Christ. As many of us have, as have accepted Christ at this stage, God wants to use you to help someone else accept Christ.